So, for our lesson today, we're going to be dealing with all sorts of interesting stuff here. Like, for instance, our first one, we're going to look at continuous exponential growth. Now, again, typically this is going to go in when you're trying to figure out population over a time. That's kind of important when you're trying to figure out, you know, jobs and public works and things like that that might depend on how big your population is growing or declining. So we have this kind of funky looking expression over here where our P sub O is our initial population. Anytime we're talking about exponential growth or decay, we're going to be using E. We'll talk a little bit about this K value here in a minute, and then T is going to be the amount of time this is going to occur over. So for instance, here in 2000, the world population was estimated to be 6.124 billion people. In 2005, it was 6.515 billion. Determine the value of K, the world's relative rate of growth. That's what our K value is going to be. Sort of like when we're doing interest, it'd be like 4% or whatever it is. Well, now we're actually going to calculate this. So we got to figure out what goes in all of these other slots because K is going to be what we're on the lookout for. So let's see here. Let's start with some simpler stuff. All right, so when we started, our initial population was 6.124 billion. And we'll just leave it in that decimal point for right now. We won't put all the zeros in here. And one other thing I know is that E is not going to change because that's a value. So let's see, what else can we figure out here? In 2005, wait a minute. We started in 2000. Now we're in 2005, so my T value is going to be 5. If some of you feel more comfortable writing 5K. I'm going to change it to that in a minute. But then I'm figuring, okay, so I got that, I got that, I got that. I need that. Oh, that must mean this P sub T, whatever this rate's going to be, it's going to be what this would equal. Because I'm going to use all of my information. It's not like I'm going to give you information that's just kind of there to waste space. So my job through all of this now is to figure out a way to get to that K value, to solve for it. Ew. Okay. So if I want to do that, my first job is going to be to isolate this E to the 5K. How do I dump this? Just divide. Some of you are like, do I have to do a log here? Not yet. So I'll go ahead and divide that. And yes, you're going to get some funky type decimal stuff. So let's do this. And just for sake of simplicity, since there are going to be some multiple steps sometimes, we will go ahead and round to ten thousandths on these so we're all doing the same thing. So, okay. So that's approximately what we're looking at with our decimal here. And I will get our calculator ready just in case. So as we're doing that, now that I have my e to the 5k there, What's going to be my next step? What am I going to do now to come one step closer? I need to isolate the 5K. I need the E out. Natural log. Because natural log and E are inverses. So those will wipe out. So I've got the natural log. And I'm not going to type that in my calculator quite yet. Because if I do that now and I round it, we've already rounded once. If I do it again here, I'm going to round again. And then when I divide for my last step, I round again. I want to have as few times that I need to round as humanly possible. So let's see what this growth rate's going to be. So we got the natural log. And we're going to divide that by 5. Make sure you close your parenthesis. Because otherwise we could get in all sorts of trouble here. So I'm looking. Now remember, we're looking at a rate of growth here. So 
if I wanted to speak of it as a rate, oops, that would be four if I was rounding, excuse me. Okay, the growth rate of the world over that time period would be about 1.24%, because remember, you'd move your decimal point two places to the right to turn it into a percentage. So that's part of what I'm looking for here. The other part we're going to let the calculator help us with. Because now we're looking to see when the world's population will reach 7.5 billion. Well, now that I have this value, I can go back to my original expression, take my initial population, but now I have this K rate this point zero one two four but I want to make it a general expression so I could figure out you know what's the population after so many years or when does the population reach a certain value so I'm gonna take going from specific to something general where I could go to the calculator and I could say okay I know my initial population it's exponential growth, so I'm going to use E. I just found this K value, but I want to be able to extend that to multiple years. So X is going to help me do that. Because then, if I go to my chart, so there's my 6.124, and again, this is all in billions. When's it going to reach 7.5? I go until I get to that value that's above. So I could either say 16 to 17 years, because it's going to fall somewhere in between, because that's a little below, that's a little above. Or if you were going to say one specific year, you'd have to say during year 17, because year 16 is not quite going to get me there when I'm looking for this. So there's a lot of things that are the same in here, but sometimes I may have to find part be able to make this expression. So there is a little bit more kind of a thinking process to this to figure out, okay, what piece do I need and how is that going to work? But you will find out in a lot of these there's a lot of similarities in them. We actually get to use the same one twice. So again, we're still in here. This time we don't have a world population, though we have bacteria. I like talking about people better, but hey, don't tell the science people that. So now I got some bacteria that are growing exponentially. Ew. An initial population of a thousand bacteria. Okay, so that's my P sub O. Grows to 2,500, which would be what I'd have here at the end, in four hours. Okay. So this time I know T. I still don't know what K is. So write a function for this population of bacteria as a function of time. In other words, figure out what K is and then put it back into a general expression like we did up above. So just like we did up above, we want to isolate the E first, which won't be too complex to do. And just like we did when we were up above, we're going to go ahead and to get rid of my E, we're going to use the natural log as its inverse. So again, the whole idea here is to figure out that K value so I have the general formula to be able to put in my calculator. So if I divide by 4, that's going to end up getting me my K value for this one. So let me swing this over. Get out of that mode. Make sure I close my parentheses on my natural log or that will get me a whole different problem. So here... My K value, 2291, I'll stretch it out a little bit here. 
So again, if somebody asked me for the rate, I'd be able to explain you know, how quickly they're growing, about 22.9%. But what we really want is that general equation from this, which again, I'd use my initial population and then my k value with the time included. So this would be my function for this population as a function of time. I could put this as p of t instead. Probably should be if I'm trying to be good about things. But y is going to be the same thing. So once I have the equation and estimate the population at the end of 16 hours, just like before, we'll pop our calculator up, we'll get our graphing function working. Whoop, not that way we won't. Let's try that again. That's better. And we're looking for end of 16 hours. So again, my hours are my x column. So I would just go down to when my x equals 16, which would be my t value. And some of you may be wondering right now, did I actually have to put this into the y equals? Could I have just stayed out here in my regular mode, typed this in, I did it again. Typed this in here, and instead of having x used, since they told me it was 16, since they told me what t was, couldn't I just have typed in 16? and did the same thing? And the answer is absolutely. So if you ever are given the t value, that might make it to a point where you might want to just plug it in this way instead of plugging it into the y equals. But again, they're one and the same. Doesn't really matter. Both of them will work. So you see why people make the big bucks when they're doing all these crazy applications like this. Because it does. It takes time and it takes a lot of accuracy. Two, we're still, now we're talking about money. Much more fun to talk about than people or bacteria. Special savings account goo exponentially. Gives me the hint we're going to be using the E. From 5,000 to 5,682 in one year. If the account continues to grow at this rate, how much will be in the account five years later? Notice it didn't ask me to find K, but I need to. Because I need to know what that rate's going to be. So kind of break this up into parts here. At the end of the one year, it's 5682. My initial is 5,000. So I'm still just following this guy. E won't change. I still don't know what K is, but I'm starting with 1K because my time is one year for this particular part of the example. So you're like, we end up doing the same thing every time on this. It's true. And that's one of the things that make these not quite so bad as we would think. So do my division first. And this time there's not going to be a whole lot of fancy business to do. I'll use my natural log to take care of the E. So my K value is just the natural log. And I get my K. Because again, once you get that, now I can go back and say, okay, so my expression
would look like this, whether I was given a value for t or whether I was given this value and I had to figure out what t is. So since in the case we're working with, how much will be in the account five years later, I absolutely have a choice of how I want to do it. I can put it into the y equals and go to where x equals 5, or I can just take this and go ahead and just type in my 5 for the t. Find out that I have a little over $9,477 in there. Oh, I got, oh, oh, wow, I got lots of hands everywhere. I've watched all of the same thing. You're going to tell me at the same time. It's going to be fun. Okay, I'll just go one at a time this way. So if it's asking for uh, what was the account five years later, why would you start at 5000 instead of 5600 Oh. Or you could just put in 6 for T. Ooh, let's play with it. Are you going to say the same thing? Yeah. Okay, let's experiment. Let me grab something here. I want to see if both of your theories can work, because I agree with the first part that I did not take into consideration. All right, let's read this again. Special savings account grew exponentially due to the interest from 5,056 to in one year. If the account continues to grow at this rate, how much will be in the account five years later? So we have two issues we're taking on right now. One, depending on how we read, if we're looking at it that it's at this account now, if it's five years later, do I need to be starting at 5682? But now the bigger thing is, could I just make this six years and I would get the same thing? So here's the question we're going to take a peek at. If I take that value after that first year and do this after five years, will I get the same thing? as if I started at the 5,000 and just added an extra year in. Oh, I'm hearing yes already. Some of you are a little too quick for me. All right. But the bigger issue to most of you is, Hardy, you boneheaded this. Yeah, I didn't read carefully. It's true. I'm not going to lie. But I still want to look at this. Oh, a little more, somebody's saying. It's, it's a rounding issue, maybe? Let's see. We have a few cents difference, but again, that's going to come back to rounding and things like that again. So with either of these, if you were looking to the nearest dollar, you're going to be at 770, 771. Most people, when you get into this much money, aren't going to complain about 38 cents. Well, then again, some of you may. I don't know. So, but in either way, you both are making more sense than I did originally. So, well put on that. Good looking out. That's something we would now want to look at. So good job on reading carefully. That gives me confidence that moving forward this is going to work a little bit easier. But either way, that's a heck of a lot more money than this is going to be. So nicely played. But let's change one thing up that we haven't done yet. In an account where interest is compounded continuously at a rate of 5% per year, you're like, okay, there's $4,125 in the account after 10 years. What was the original amount in the account? Ooh. I know how much there is at the end. I don't know how much there was at the beginning. But they give me my rate. This is my K value, but remember, I need to use that as a decimal. And I know the time. So now we've got a little bit different of an issue. So I look at this and I say, okay. I 
I need to figure out what P sub O is. What do I need to do to isolate that? Don't overthink. Yeah, I can divide by E to that one half power. So we can pull this up. So 4125 divided by E. So we started with about a little over 2,500 here. So the values that you're given can move around. Sometimes you'll be given the K, you find the initials. Sometimes you'll be find the T, you'll be given everything else. Just be flexible in what you're working with. So it's not so much about the formula as reading carefully to see what information they're going to be giving to you. But some of these formulas are just amazing where they come from because I can't figure out how they'd figure these out over time. Carbon-14 dating. Check out that exponent. This is going to be interesting. So they'll give us the initial amount of carbon like they did the initial amount of money, the initial amount of bacteria, number of years that have passed, and the amount that remains. Okay, how old is a fossil remain that has lost 95% of its carbon-14? You're like, well, wait a minute. I have no value to work with. There's a couple of things you could do here. If you want to use A and parts of it, you can. But my general rule of thumb is if there's no amount given, and I'll have some people yell at me about this, but I like making things a little more concrete. I make something up. Sort of like when you're doing the interest problems and they say, hi, you have some birthday money and they don't tell you how much. Shoot, I might use a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever, but it'll all work. Same thing happens here. When they're talking about percentages, since most percentages are out of a hundred, I typically start there. So if I'm looking at my initial amount, I'm going to use a hundred this time. Not because it told me that, just because, well, I have that flexibility this time. And the reason I'm going to do that, and I'm going to be looking for T, if I had 100, but I've lost 95% of it, how much do I have left? I heard it. Five. That's why I like using a number like 100, because it's easy to make sure I get a value that works for me. If I use some other number, it might not be quite as easy. Because now, I can just go through like we've done. You're like, okay, it's the same thing again. You're like, hey, that's like 0 .05. Couldn't I just use 0 .05? Sure. But this is one of those points, again, that we want to make sure that we're not rounding too much. Because I notice here, okay, i got this E to deal with now. I know it's natural log. But when I do that, I don't want that value yet. Because I realize to get T alone then, because so I've got the natural log of 5 hundredths equals this, I still have to divide by this. So, don't do any rounding or anything fancy like that until we have the T isolated, where I can just do this. So let me clear that out. So, my five hundredths. And then the biggest thing on here is making sure I don't get the wrong number of zeros. Okay. That is a long time. I don't think I'm going to be around when 95% of 
the carbon-14 is gone out of this. And so the key ends up being here. You can start shortcutting certain things. Because I noticed here, there was 5% left. I had 0 0.05 here. So here I have 95% left. I didn't lose it. I have it. So I'm like, oh, so it would be 0.95 equals E to this. So basically, I would just replace the 0 0.05, the 5% that I had before, with the 95% left that I have now. And divide. So once I get the hang of how this works, ooh, I can start kind of saving myself some time here. Life's going to be a little easier to work with. I'm still not going to be alive for this much time. We'll go to whole years here, but it's a little more reasonable at least. So we got a little bit better to play with here, but again, basically we keep doing the same types of things, using our rules with logs or exponents to isolate the variable that we're trying to solve for. And that's kind of the key of this whole thing. The one last part I want to get to here today, because I think I'm going to end up doing logistic growth tomorrow, is we're going to flip ourselves over here. Let me get this out of the way. half-life formula, this one shows up a bit more often, where we've got this original amount, and we've got the time that's passed, and we have the length of the half-life if we're given it. So like for instance here, the half-life of an isotope is 415 years. Okay, that's my H value. If there were 15 grams of the isotope at a recorded date, my original amount, how much is left 200 years later? My T. So I'm going to be trying to find this because I have the other three values. So A is going to equal 15 grams times one half my time that's passed, 200 years, over the half-life. 15. Once I get the setup ready, calculator does all the heavy lifting. Make sure that when you're punching in your 200 over 415 that you put it in parentheses because if you forget, the calculator is going to do this to the 200th power and then divide it by 415. That's not what I want. So I'd have about 10.74 grams left 200 years later. So that's not decaying very fast. And then this might be the strangest thing that you'll see. And I apologize that I didn't get this onto your note sheet. Because when you look at this, you're like, wait a minute. A radioactive substance has a half-life of 32 years. Okay, I know where to put that. Find the constant K in the decay formula for the substance. You're like, wait a minute. There's no K in here anywhere. My apologies. Because that was on page 533 and I did not put it in here anywhere. So let's get that put in here. So what we're going to look at here is we're going to have to do a little bit of thinking on this. So I sit here and I go, okay. Here we go again with kind of taking it at a value that we know. Because again, they don't talk about how much of the substance we have. Radioactive substance has a half-life of 32 years. Find the constant K in the decay formula for the substance. Okay, I'm going to go back to my 100 again because it's just something that's simple to work with. So if I start with 100... What I'm trying to do is, it's half-life would get me down to half of it, or 50. 
So I'm kind of having to read into this a little bit. I don't know what k is, but what value would I put in for t? 32. Because the time would have elapsed to 32 when it goes down to half. So I'm like, okay. Divide by 100. So I'm at one half. You're like, oh, half life. I have half left. This makes sense. So once again, we go, all right, natural log it. And again, don't go with the rounding quite yet. Pull this guy up. Oops, I don't need two of those either. And that's what I'd be looking for. So again, it just kind of comes back to working these to get yourself into a, into a good spot. I'm actually gonna wait on, can I do doubling time? I can do doubling time and save logistic for tomorrow. Okay. Because then I'm gonna go trimming the assignment here if you didn't see that up on the board already. So, all right, use the formula here and it gives me all my information. So let's see what we got here. Harlem City has a doubling time of seven years. Okay, length of time to double, seven. So that's my D. In 2008, it had a population of 132,000 people. P sub O. How many people will it have in 2010? Which is two years later. So I say, okay, how many people, don't know. My initial population, or my baseline population is 132,000. times two, and since we have a specific case of 2010, my t is two, and my d is seven. And all I'm gonna have to do here is plug that in. And again, careful with the exponent, make sure your fraction's in parentheses. And we have to deal with whole people here. We don't want to deal with portions of people. Kind of, eh. So now here's the happy part of this. We'll deal with the logistic growth tomorrow, playing with the window on the calculator, seeing how we want to do things and all that. For the time being, though, the major deal is that's too much for this. So we're going to kind of hand pick some problems here. So instead of 12 problems, we're going down to seven. Because again, I think at that point, with that many to practice, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what's going on. So we'll play with the graphs tomorrow. If there's some questions on these so far, we'll do that. But like I said, starting tomorrow, we're just going to go into worksheet mode, except for this last problem for a few days, getting you ready for that unit test next week.